Good evening. Yeah, we just got out here about 15 minutes ago, and this fire is just blazing up, as you can tell right now behind me. We keep having to back up away from this thing as the heat just is scorching out here today. And that orange bucket that is filled with water uh, can carry between 1,500 to 2,000 gallons of water. They'll take it, dip it, put the water in, and that's what they'll dump all over the fire. To show you exactly what it looks like right here behind me, you can see still a lot of people out here, three different agencies. The security guard for the plant attempted to battle the flames with nothing but an extinguisher. 30-foot high flames scorched hundreds of crates at the back of the treetop plant. High up in the air, it's our latest news gathering tool, but the Sky 13 camera is staying far away from your front door. It is accumulating on the ground and um, I was dared, so I'm just going to show you by creating a snow angel here. <laughs> How much snow, how much snow has fallen this morning? Kind of makes you feel like a kid when you're, uh, <laughs> when you're in the snow. But look at that. I think that's about an inch of snow. There are 76,000 grandchildren in the state of Arizona right now that are being raised by their grandparents. That is enough to fill the entire University of Arizona football stadium and the McHale Center basketball arena combined. And the number is growing, which is why it's important for all of us to have this conversation now before more of us become parents a second time. There's a cluster of about 100 mailboxes here, and neighbors told me they're fed up. Over the past month, they said their bills and bank statements have been swiped right from the mailbox. I was able to work and function and spend time with my family. Dr. Ibrahim's brother suffers from migraine and he goes and sits in uh, amongst his trees and he feels better and that really was sort of the in inspiration behind why and what we should try. The hope is this green light therapy will help reduce uh, the amount of other medications needed or uh, reducing the, uh, the potential for dependence on these medications. The carpeting was supposed to be fire retardant. When he toured the Pioneer for the first time years ago, he scrawled his initials and the soot still left behind from the fire, one floor up from where his father died. It's still there. It hasn't been cleaned off. But that's okay. At this point, I don't want it cleaned off. It's a reminder of that day. It was a watershed moment in my life. It's changed forevermore. Craig Rack on Mount Lemmon, where an overnight scare is not keeping people from making the trip up the mountain and a ride down to enjoy the snow. The snow is tonight at five. <laughs> Something new popping up on the U.S. side of the border in Nogales. And it's causing a lot of heartache for Andrea Chiquete. Her sons live in Mexico, a grandson she's never even hugged before. It's a different. The last time they don't have this, we can shake the hands, kiss, and that. Yeah, but now, no. <laughs> now we can touch our little fingers. So. I love you, Willa. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> the new mesh fence put up by Customs and Border Protection about two months ago at this very popular meeting spot. I guess people abused of the liberty they had to get close to the relative, I guess. And maybe that's why they put it up. And that's pretty much what happened. Now, agents, they tell me, quote, the purpose of the mesh is to prevent contraband from being passed across the international boundary. The new fence, about 150 feet west of West International Street, not enough to keep love from crossing. Hi, yes, I'm happy. I love my husband. Eva Bernal took a bus from Northern California. A few steps down from this section of the fence, the portion with bigger gaps, just big enough to hold hands. Today's a good day. Uh, today it's good. Yesterday too. Yesterday too. A good day followed by a harsh reality of having family on both sides of the border. It's, it's more hard. But... Phyllis Gasparo loves to draw. One of my favorite things to do actually are Christmas cards. But Gasparo's true passion is drawing criminals. She's a latent print examiner for the Tucson Police Department's crime lab, but one of her side duties is sketching suspects in criminal investigations. As an art major at the University of Arizona, Gasparo knew right away this was her goal. 
But it wasn't easy getting there. She eventually got hired on with TPD's crime scene unit. The supervisor of the unit uh, uh, told us that the next uh, composite artist better be able to draw the Madonna. So Gasparro yeah. went home and sketched a religious Madonna and Madonna the singer. The move clearly impressed her supervisor. He said, OK, uh, but you need to attend the FBI's forensic facial imaging class. It was there during a three week program where Gasparro learned the art of composite sketching as well as the psychology behind it. Because of the fight or flight um, instinct that we have, um, the the mind has the the ability to protect itself and so there will be memory blocks within the first 48 hours. Gasparro returned to TPD as a resident sketch artist coming up with drawings like these that led to arrests. One of her most recent sketches may look familiar. A man suspected of sexually assaulting a woman on the south side in March. Of course, um, then ends up being a tool for the investigation. Well, we have a new candidate class and we are in our third session of training for that candidate class. Currently, the exercise this morning is a, a early tracking exercise. Is this what you all were looking at right here? And our goal is to get everybody through the class, to get them to make it and, and become a, a, a member of the group. Yeah, this is the, the bridge. I just always have been interested in helping people. I worked in college at Campus Recreation as a facility supervisor, so I'd respond to emergencies in the facility. And now that I've graduated, kind of just looking to, you know, find that passion again. And this is a good way to give back to the community. So train yourself to have your track between you and the sun. Are there any concerns you have about doing this? No, not really. I mean, I'm, I'm not super worried about it. I mean, obviously you go out into the terrain and um, you might be put in some situations that have some danger, but that's why we go through almost a full year of training. I think we have a, the signature right here. Oh, yeah. uh, the program runs several months. So this is, a, is, a, is their very basic uh, introduction to Arizona's uh, SAR, Search and Rescue. We're all volunteer. That to me looks old. That to me looks yeah. like it was made when that was when People go out when they can go out and when they want to go out. If they don't have to leave work, they go out when they, when they can, when they're available. Each word and inflection of prayer took a different tone this Easter Sunday for Tony Ralphs. You wouldn't know it just looking or listening. at the oasis-like retreat of the Holy Trinity Monastery grounds. You'd have to sense Tony's grief and the pulse of the parishioners. I think there's, there's a real confusion going on. Signs of the end, its final Easter mass, from the proud leader not allowed to lead. Are you allowed to attend? Oh yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, st I'm still Catholic. They haven't taken that away from from me. Details first reported by the Benson News Sun, the end of more than 40 years of Catholic service ruled closed by the Olivetan Order. That were not viable is what they said. Is it a financial thing? Not financial, uh, -uh. not enough monks. Staff there told me it'll force the four monks they do have to relocate. The Abbot General's decree will dissolve the 40-year-old monastic community, accusing Father Henry Capdeville of defiance and disobedience for not resigning as Board of Directors president. And I feel so disillusioned. I feel so bad. And leaving him homeless. So every, everything I, I ever had is here. So it's like uh, ripping your heart out is what it's like. I would like Father Henry and Brother Gary to stay here and die here. As, as Father Lewis did, this has been their home, both of them for over 40 years. The closure leaves parishioners in limbo, wondering what's next. A church's chance for resurrection, perhaps? I don't know what God's will is, but we'll see what happens. The gates will stay open to visitors, with Father Henry expecting the Diocese of Tucson to take over. Tourists passing through who stay for religious sanctuary. But the Celtic cross will loom large without its spiritual leader and his loyal followers.